All right, here's the explanation of arpeggio exercise number two. Now, in this arpeggio exercise, uh, the right hand isn't too hard. It's pretty consistent. It's gonna be basically P, I, A, I, A, I. Right? P, I, A, A, I. It, the pattern changes up a little bit in starting the fifth measure. The fifth measure, so it's gonna be P, I, A, I, M, I. And notice in the fifth measure, that there's an M that rep represents the middle, so it's gonna be P I A I M I. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward with when it comes to right hand. Now the only part where it really changes is measure 17, where instead of going this kind of motion, it changes up into a different pattern. P and measure 17. P M P A. So what I would do, just as a practice, is first practice the right hand, um, for example, in the beginning of P, I, A, I, A, I, and then I would just practice measure 17 by itself. P, M, P, A, M, A. So you get used to that kind of combination. All right, another things, other things to note about this exercise is that every time you see an F, all right, it's very important. Every time you see an F on the top line, all right, it's not F natural, it's F sharp, all right? That, the way you can tell that is by the key signature. There's one sharp in the key signature right next to the treble clef, all right? So if you see one sharp in the key signature, that tells you either in the key of G or key of E minor. In this case, we're in the key of E minor, okay? Anyways, the point is, when you see that sharp, every time you see that sharp, that note is always going to be sharp. So for example, all right, we see that sharp, that sharp is an F sharp, okay? So every time you see an F, it's not F natural, but F sharp, okay? That applies anywhere in the music. So that's what key signatures do. They, they tell you which notes are going to be sharp all the time or flat all the time. Okay, here's a playthrough through arpeggio exercise number two. One and two and three and 